Next up there is Carl from formerly Rain Tanks, now Grafana Labs. He'll tell you about Grafana. Last year's major feature was UTF-8 support, so you could put in smileys, and I'm <laughs> happy to see what we see this time. Any web UI without uh, emojis is a sad UI. <laughs> so the title for this presentation is Grafana and Prometheus, uh, also known as Best Friends uh, Forever. <laughs> Um, my name is Carl Bergqvist, I'm a software engineer at Grafana Labs, so I spend uh, most of my days uh, working on Grafana until recently when I went on parental leave. So if I'm kind of rusty on the subject, please give me some time and I will find the answer for you. Uh, but um, this was a major downhole in my commitment, although I've been following the project, but I stayed away from commits almost. Uh, for those of you who don't know Grafana, Grafana is a time series visualization tools that support multiple, uh, multiple data sources, and one of them is Prometheus, which is the one we're going to focus on today. Uh, this talk will not be an introduction to Grafana. Uh, I would rather highlight certain features and changes that happened during the year since last PromCon. Uh, some features that I don't think you should miss, basically. So let's start looking at the query editor for uh, Prometheus. Uh, the major change we had this year was that we changed the input field to a text area. Thanks, Brian, for that suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, although we're kind of surprised how, uh, by the lack of um, feedback from the uh, Prometheus community about how bad this editor is. Uh, so we started quite recently uh, improving it. Uh, it's not in master yet, but you can find it in the Ace Editor branch. Ooh. So <laughs> this is going to be a little bit better. <laughs> Lightning, coloring, and uh, okay, uh, and even uh, some uh, like explanations to functions and so on. Ooh. So you can get them right in the UI. <laughs> That's quite an upgrade. Um, yeah, so if you want to uh, test it, use the Ace Editor branch and please uh, give us feedback. Uh, the graph panel is the bread and butter of uh, Grafana. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it so much, but I want to mention one feature that is the display series overrides, which allows you to uh, specify a regex pattern, as you can see in the, in the bottom. Oh, yeah. And then, I, in this case, I disable lines and enable points and force the color red for the upper 95 percentile or 99 percentile or something like that. Because if you do percentile graphs, they tend to be very jumpy, and that tend to hurt my eyes. Uh, so I like to have the jumpy uh, numbers as uh, points inside. Another cool thing is that you can fill between gaps, uh, between lines. So in this case, we fill between mean and max, and then we draw an average line in the middle. Because we know uh, the average is always a lie, but this gives you a small insight about how much of a lie it is. Uh, annotations is uh, a really nice feature. If you want to give, uh, uh, if you want to draw certain events in the graph panel, uh, in this case, it's uh, deployments. Uh, and that's, uh, that's going to help you um, understand why your system behaves in certain, way, uh, certain ways um, during deployments and so on. So in this case, we see that uh, we're uh, using more CPU or something, and then we deploy again and we use less CPU. The single start <laughs> panel, um, quite good at giving a, a quick glimpse of numbers. Uh, so, and, and one uh, feature in, in the single stat panel is that, uh, is that you can map ranges of values to a certain text or something. So in this case, it's much easier to map it to an emoji uh, and, um, uh, rather than uh, displaying the uh, core number. Because if your uh, target is changing, then you have to keep uh, in, uh, track of whatever target you're supposed to hit all the time. This gives, uh, reduces the, the cognitive load for anyone watching the dashboard. Uh, and if you have dashboards on TVs on, and walls, this will give a really uh, quick glimpse, a glimpse of something. So imagine having that 
panel outside your war room. So your manager can see that it's bad. Just bring us coffee. Or now it's starting to get buried. Uh, the table panel is a way to show uh, your time series as tabular data. You can either show all time series as columns, or you can show aggregate uh, of each time series. And you can also give uh, uh, set some color thresholds for either the text or the background. Um, yeah, that, that's basically all about table panel. Uh, a new feature in uh, Prometheus Square Editor that is that we can format uh, the series uh, as uh, uh, column-based uh, column data, which basically means that all labels get their own columns. So this might be a nice way to like inspect queries and uh, yeah, see some more data. Uh, it's almost as the from from uh, the built-in tool with console, but not quite yet. Uh, a really cool new panel is the heat map panel that we introduced in the last release. Um, so imagine you want to measure something like HTTP request latency. Uh, there's a few different problems with that. The first problem arises uh, if you want to measure ever every uh, request, because uh, if you store every request and want to uh, print a graph of every request, you're basically bound to the pixels of your screen. Otherwise, you would have to skip uh, rendering uh, data points. So that means you have to aggregate it somehow. And then we're back to using averages. And average is always a lie, because it can tend to be jumpy. Um, one solution to that is to use percentiles, so you can see that most of the requests are going fine, but some are going bad. The problem with percentiles, uh, it, at least in Prometheus, is that every node uh, calculates their own percentile, and you cannot aggregate percentiles, ever. Then, then you get a mess. Um, so the solution to that is to incre increment buckets instead. So if we use a histogram, we can say that most of the request happens within uh, 0 to one, uh, 10 milliseconds. And then, then we can see the distribution of that. The problem with this is that we don't see uh, the values changing over time. And that we can do with a heat map. So instead of the height of the bar, we change the color of, of, of the bucket. There are, unfortunately, some problems uh, with heat map and Prometheus. <laughs> So uh, heat map uh, can either calculate its bucket in the front end, which would, uh, which would require all data to be sent to the Grafana, um, or it can use pre-aggregated uh, buckets. But currently, Grafana does not support the way uh, Prometheus um, store histograms. That's something that's going to be fixed uh, soon. Uh, I can promise you that. Um, yeah. Another plugin that we have is the diagram plugin. It's not bundled with the Grafana, but you can install it using the CLI tool. And now you can uh, draw simple diagrams or complex diagrams, and then you connect the nodes to time series. And then that's a, way, a really good way of uh, visualizing your stack or something and see how uh, they, are, they cause effect on each other. One of the most powerful features uh, in Grafana is the templating feature, which um, basically means that you use the, you, you, you can configure a template variable per dashboard and control uh, all the uh, all the panels panel that uses this template variable. <coughs> so let's say you uh, set up a template variable like this server. Uh, then in your query, you use the template variable name. Uh, by uh, any of these uh, uh, syntaxes, uh, both are supported. Um, then when uh, Grafana sends the query to Prometheus, these values will be replaced with whatever you have selected at the top of your dashboard. <laughs> One uh, cautious note, though, is if you have uh, template variables that support multi-select, you have to have the red uh, tilde 
Otherwise, you're going to send a request to Prometheus asking for a node called node pipe node 2. And Prometheus is going to say, I don't have a node called node 1 pipe 2, node 2. So it's just going to return an empty result, and there's going to be confusion. Um, I would suggest you always use this. Uh, some Prometheus developers might disagree, because um, it might cause higher load, I guess, uh, compared to a perfect match. But basically, if you use template, use this, always. When you write your template variables, there's some uh, built-in functions in Grafana that allows you to uh, be a little bit smart about the uh, values you can get. So we uh, have uh, this function that uh, strips the values of um, the labels. So in this case, we ask for all possible label values for job uh, in the whole Prometheus instance. You can also drill down and say, I want all the label values for just the up time series, uh, which is, makes sense because uh, some series might have colliding, uh, colliding um, label values and uh, label names. You can also ask for uh, a list of time series. So uh, if you want to have a um, dashboard where you don't know exactly which time series you want to look at, you can uh, use uh, this as a template. Uh, by a query. Uh, we also support alerting, and there's uh, some major differences in how Grafana support alerting and how uh, Prometheus does it. Our ours, uh, alerting is our alerting is built from the dashboard as a beginning, while Prometheus is uh, from a text file. Uh, I, I think they're so fundamentally different uh, that uh, I don't. I think we should compare them side by side. Um, this is targeted uh, uh, for um, maybe not the most expertise users, uh, but rather people who want to create alerts and want to do it from uh, graphs they already know. So it would be easy to run both. Some users might prefer this. Some users might prefer uh, the text-based uh, that the Prometheus does. Some uh, notes about this, though. This is not uh, uh, clustable like the alert manager. Uh, you can get high availability by running multiple uh, Grafana instances, but it, it doesn't support DDoP being the same is as good as uh, the alert manager does. We have been we have issues for sending alerts from Grafana uh, to the alert manager, uh, and that's a good solution, but that would require some internal uh, refactoring in Grafana. Uh, which I hope we can do, then we would be able to send alerts from Grafana to the alert manager. That would be awesome. Uh, and uh, I so should also mention that alerting in Grafana is based on uh, metrics you already have. So in this case, we, uh, we want to have the result from the metric A in the metric tab. We reduce it by average and check that it's below 20. So that's how it's worked, basically. A new feature in the last version is uh, version history. So whenever you save a dashboard, you get a little prompt asking you whatever you did. Uh, so now you can have a history of the dashboard. And you can restore old dashboards as well. So if your colleague made a weird change, you can just restore your version. Uh, and you can also diff the dashboards. So if you want to see what someone did, you can just, uh, uh, on the last page, you can click the checkbox and then the button to the top left, uh, bottom left. Um, I know a lot of people are, uh, are asking for uh, controlling their dashboards in Git instead. And uh, <laughs> uh, that's something we're going to look, in, look into during uh, next coming month. Uh, we're going to focus more on automation. Uh, the first step would be to have uh, configurable uh, da data sources from uh, disk somehow, or environment variables or something like that, because uh, that's also a pain. Uh, and the next step would be dashboards. And uh, shout out to the Cort um, Cortex people who made the Grafana Lib uh, uh, project. So if you want to have uh, dashboards in your Git system already, uh, in Git you can do it with Grafana Lib instead, currently. Um, we also host a bunch of dashboards at grafana.com. And uh, if you want to contribute to open source but don't write code, I suggest you 
publish some dashboards uh, for your weird uh, system that some uh, very few others might have. But if you find, uh, if you share it with someone else, they could save tons and tons of hours. Um, because setting up dashboards is not a super fun task, uh, but looking at them is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> we also started hosting Grafana online. So if you want uh, Grafana in the cloud, we can do that for you. Um, there's a free version, and then you can upgrade it. Uh, in the upcoming versions of Grafana, we're going to introduce dashboard folders. It's not complete yet. Um, but now you're going to be able to organize uh, all your dashboards in different folders. And as we see, we all know the ops people like uh, logarithmic scales and this and all that. Uh, each of these folders will have uh, different permissions. So you can say that the ops people are the only one who can edit the ops dashboard folder. And you can over have different overrides, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, it's going to take a few more weeks or months, but it's getting there. So this uh, was the numbers I presented at last um, PromCon. Uh, for those who don't know it, Grafana sends a heartbeat every night uh, with some statistics to us regarding how many instances, uh, instances are running, how many uh, instance, instances are using every popular data source and so on, so we know. Um, and uh, this is the number for Grafana this year. Quite a good growth. <laughs> So, this is the number for Prometheus. Can I get a bit of big? That's really, really, really good. Uh, I do, I do. Uh, uh, we store all these events as logs. But uh, yeah, I, I can show you the growth later. But it's very line, uh, linear, it's steady growth. Uh, that's basically it for me. Um, so if you have, have any questions, feel free. Uh, I'm also available during the rest of the day and tomorrow for more in-depth questions if you have. I'm not sure if I did anything good on time or... Yeah, it was time. I'm sure there'll be questions. <laughs> uh, so I like all my stuff in Git, like everything, right? <laughs> and like all the right features Grafana has, like clicking together dashboards and having photos and everything and versioning, that's nice. But like I would have everything in Git rather, right? Yeah. Uh, is there any other planned work to make this process easier, to make maybe make it easier to declaratively define dashboards in your editor, like just textual? Because right now this is JSON block, for example, and like you cannot just write it down by hand, right? It's never gonna work. So you have to go in and click your dashboard together, and then export this and store it somewhere. Um, but yeah, if the sort of textual process would be easier. That would be great, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I can definitely see a future where you you control your dashboard from your editors and then just uh, load them uh, from disk instead. I, I think that would be a much uh, better solution. But but JSON is a messy format. Uh, Grafana Lib has a nice uh, way of dealing with that. You basically write a dashboard as Python, and then you they generate the, the JSON. Uh, so they have a, D, a dashboard DSL. Um, that's something we might look into, uh, either to store them as uh, in that format on disk or uh, editing them uh, in Grafana in that format. Because the, the, uh, the, the JSON is very messy. Thanks. Um, earlier on in the presentation, you showed the um, events on a, on a graph. Yeah. Is how can I do this uh, with the Prometheus? Is there already any uh, tool or metric I can use to integrate Prometheus and Grafana this way? Uh, so Prometheus doesn't have a uh, um, 
the best way to get uh, annotations in the, the graph panel would be from logs or something like that. And Prometheus doesn't really support that. You can have queries, uh, Prometheus queries as annotations, but I don't really see how it's useful. Uh, you can have queries uh, asking Prometheus to uh, draw a line every time the CPU is below a certain threshold or something like that. But the best use case for annotations would be to export it from an external system, I guess. Uh, either using uh, Elasticsearch uh, or there's also a plugin called uh, Simple JSON. Uh, that will send a HTTP request to whatever endpoint, and you can return any data. So that's a simple way of integrating uh, uh, Grafana and um, maybe your deployment tool or Jira or something like that custom that we don't uh, support yet. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, um, answering our follow-up to the question before, am I the only one who edits the JSON file, stores it into a Git repository, and pushes it with the HTTP API? No. <laughs> <laughs> because actually I was like, mm, that's the way to go for me. Uh, so there's also a, a tool uh, written uh, called Wissy. Uh, Uh, that uh, I've written in Node.js that uh, allows you to do some automation regarding uploading JSON files and so on. It's uh, quite good. You can also migrate dashboards between instances and so on. After some internal considerations, they'll probably just end up with using Git as a complete backend and nothing else. Let me know. Won't they? <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess we would support uh, pulling da uh, dashboards from. Um, a few different uh, sources. So he doesn't agree yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, just for completeness, we also uh, at Quora has built something for this, for, more for the Kubernetes world, but we have like a sidecar that um, whenever you change your um, JSON uh, blobs for the uh, dashboards, that uh, they automatically get up, updated and everything. So it's like a stateless Grafana. Is, uh, do you have a project name? or? Um, yeah, it's it started as sort of a hack. Um, so it's in another repository. It's in the Prometheus operator repository under like a contrib folder. Uh, Prometheus operate. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's under the Quora's org. Oh, OK. Uh, maybe we could just, <laughs> yep. we, we, we can post it on Twitter later. Yeah. OK, I have a question. I was trying to convert some Kibana dashboards to Grafana dashboards. And what I was really missing was one-click filtering. So I have a table where I have grouping. Mm -hmm. And then I want to click and to filter like you do in a Kibana. So did I missing a feature or is not? Uh, I'm not really sure. Kibana is kind of different. They have a lot of uh, live filtering and so on that we don't have except templating. Yeah, um, that's the only way where they found it's a template. If you have your laptop with you, uh, I would uh, be yeah. happy to see uh, yeah. watch it later. Okay. Then we could. Which there you go. Which layer? Um, just about the service graph stuff. Oh. Uh, um, sorry. Yeah, the service graph stuff you showed earlier. Um, how are those stored? Are they just graph is dot files, or like could it, could you generate? Either could you generate them in Grafana and then export them somewhere else for documentation or whatever, or vice versa, could you um, take an existing doc graph that you have that defines your service and annotate it with time series and then dump it into Grafana? Like, or, no. or is it entirely internal representation? Uh, it's entirely internally, as far as I know. Uh, I will file a feature request. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, hi, um, I've been trying to use the table display, in, um, but it didn't work out as I expected. I was able to do a, a query in the web UI uh, mm -hmm. where it shows up only one single data point, like when the counter reset, and I wanted to do that as a table in Grafana, but I always get in Grafana a table where I have an entry every minute or every second. Uh, is that did I do anything wrong, or is it not there yet, or planned uh, for? So, so you didn't do anything wrong. Uh, Grafana does only support uh, querying uh, Prometheus over a time range. So you could set your dashboard 
only include the last minute or something like that, then you would only get the last data point. But if you do it in uh, the Prometheus tool you can, uh, you get, uh, and use the console view, then you only get the last data point. Always. Uh, uh, did I misunderstand your question? Yeah, well, I can I can do a query in the, in the web console and like for the last two hours and it gives me one data point where the counter resets, for example, if I do an I-rate uh, or, or and this, uh, I can do something, I do, can do a query to get all the instances where a query, where a counter was reset in the web console. And it gives me the graph, but only a point in this one graph in the web console. And I can't get that working in, the web, in, in Grafana. Um, Not sure why. All right. Maybe we can look at it after. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Any plans to <laughs> let us feed alerts into Grafana rather than having Grafana detect them? So the alert manager making a JSON call, because the UI in Grafana for being able to visualize the alerts and manage them is great, but the capabilities are quite limited. So you, so you want to have uh, annotation, uh, alert annotations in Grafana? Or or just being able to send from the alert manager, uh, make a JSON call into Grafana and say, I got an alert, and then use Grafana more to manipulate the alerts and look at them, rather than having Grafana try to detect the alerts itself. Any plans on going in that direction? Uh, not not, not on, at the moment. Okay. Uh, here, can I? Yep. Uh, I'm using uh, two Prometheus instances for high availability, uh, and I would like to be able to change a database source in one dashboard. Is this possible? If one Prometheus is down, then just to do a quick, quick change in the dashboard <laughs> to, to continue working. Yeah, uh, so... Uh, in Grafana, you can conf uh, configure template variables for data sources as well. So uh, let, let, let me show you. This might be interesting for the Prometheus folks. Uh, so we can create a new, with choose a data source template variable. Oh, okay. Then we say the type Prometheus and give it a name. So now you have a drop down of different Prometheus services. And in the query editor, you have to choose the template variable. It's not super clear, but, but, but you can definitely uh, make it very easy to choose, uh, switch between different Prometheus. So you need to do it before creating all graphs? And... Uh, you, or you could edit it uh, afterwards quite. But every graph separately? Yeah. And, uh, okay. <laughs> there are a bunch of projects for like uh, reading from different uh, Prometheus data sources and so on, but um, that's not something we've been involved in. As a comment, what I do if I have two Promethei and two Grafanas, and I just manually run it down, I can We're using bar charts to visualize multiple time series. Is there any way to control the order? Bar charts? They're virtualized in? Yes. <coughs> um, My, my, my honest suggestion would be no, 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 never use pie charts. Uh, bar charts, not pie charts. Bar. Uh -huh, uh, no, no, uh, not, uh, not that I'm aware of. Sorry. Sorry for missing. Can you change that? <laughs> uh, yeah, that would make sense. That would make sense. Um, I, wonder, I wonder if uh, Prometheus could implement a function to sort uh, them by uh, the value or something. If you have a bar chart, you want to sort them by name, or uh, then then you can use uh, that in uh, from Prometheus. I'm wondering, with regards to annotations, is it possible to get um, Prometheus as a data source for those? Uh, yeah, you you can use Prometheus, but then again, what would you uh, what would uh, what kind of query would you write for annotations from Prometheus? Well, I don't know if you're running like the push gateway and you're pushing oh, yeah, that, a metric for every that deployment. Would make sense. Yeah, you, and, and you can use uh, the alerts time series for annotations. Ah, 
that also makes sense. Um, you said not to use pie charts, which I'd agree with. Are there any plans to implement a waffle panel similar to GitHub contributions, which are much clearer to read for the same kind of data that you you'd usually use a pie chart for? Uh, not currently. We, we, um... I'm going to be honest, the current Grafana team, we, we don't have that much time to uh, support new panels. Uh, we're kind of very limited in how much we can do. Um, but there, there, we have a plugin system, so it's quite fairly uh, fairly easy to, to build your own uh, panel and data source if you want to. Um, any ways to have one query on the left uh, y-axis and a different query on the right axis. Just the full queries, not just different graphs, but full queries. Uh, not, not sure I, I understand that one. I can come by later. Uh, it's a, yeah. Uh, so series overrides works in a pair series basis. Yeah. Uh, can, can you apply an override to an entire query rather than per series? Because you might have a query with multiple different cardinalities over time. No, that's not possible. Only per series name. Although you could uh, use the legend formatter to format certain ser series, uh, uh, certain uh, queries. So if you use the legend format, you can control the, uh, the series name. So if you would say... Uh, um, Query one, then you can have a regist filter only applying uh, on those queries that return that begins with query A, and then you could have something like that. So it, it might be a workable <laughs> a workaround. It does work. Okay, thank you very much.